Ah, the Mediterranean, Spain, Italy, France, Greece. These countries are one of the longest living in the world with an amazing average life expectancy above 83 years. That's 10 years longer than the global average. The Mediterranean diet is notorious for its health and longevity benefits. However, you might be surprised that there are two different types of a Mediterranean diet and they're a little bit different, which I'm gonna cover in this video. I'm also gonna tell you whether you should follow the Mediterranean diet. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. We when you see headlines or studies about the health benefits of the Mediterranean diet, then they're not actually referring to the traditional cuisines of people in the Mediterranean. The diets of Spain, Italy, France, Greece, Cyprus, they're all actually quite different. They have some similarities such as the love for olive oil and moderate amounts of red wine, but there are also a lot of differences. People in the Mediterranean regions generally eat quite a lot of different foods. Fruit, vegetables, fish, potatoes, grains, beans, nuts, seeds, olive oil, eggs, dairy and poultry in no specific quantity. There's no single universal Mediterranean diet that all the countries follow. The Mediterranean diet, as it's called in human clinical trials, is a specifically formulated clinical diet. It's inspired by the Mediterranean countries, but it's still somewhat different. The clinical Mediterranean diet is more plant-based and more restrictive of meat than the traditional Mediterranean diet, with an emphasis on fruit, vegetables, grains, nuts and seeds, and more restrictive of meat and fish. The overall fat intake is between 25 to 35% of total calories with 7-8% to of total calories coming from saturated fat, protein around 15-20% to and the rest of the calories coming from carbs. If you hear about the health benefits of the Mediterranean diet, then they are generally in most cases referring to the clinical Mediterranean diet. It's somewhat different from what people actually eat in the Mediterranean countries because, you know, there's so much variety in what people eat in those regions, so there's no specific single diet. The name is, you know, whatever, it's just inspired by the Mediterranean regions. You could call it whatever you you really want like you could call it like a plant-based seafood diet you could call it a whole foods diet you know it's just a name but most of the clinical trials at least are done on the clinical mediterranean diet that is with an emphasis on more plant-based foods there have been over a dozen meta-analyses that include dozens of prospective studies finding an association between adherence to a mediterranean diet and reduced cardiovascular disease diabetes metabolic syndrome cancer arthritis neurodegeneration cognitive decline alzheimer's frailty and all-cause mortality it's important to realize the scale of these studies. Dozens of meta-analysis of dozens of studies is a large amount of data. There's really no other diet that has as much data. However, these, the ones I mentioned right now, are epidemiological studies, which means that these people aren't actively monitored and they're not randomized into different groups. The problem here is that the results can be confounded by some other variables, such as just living a healthier lifestyle or exercise. However, fortunately, we don't have to rely on epidemiological studies when we also have randomized controlled trials looking at the same thing the correlation between health outcomes and the Mediterranean diet. Randomized controlled trials actually randomize a group of people to the Mediterranean diet or a control diet, and then they follow these people for a few months to see the results. You have multiple meta-analyses of dozens of these randomized controlled trials, finding that the Mediterranean diet consistently reduces the risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, obesity, neurodegeneration, cancer, and diabetes. Meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials are considered the highest quality of evidence in science because they include a lot of studies and they tend to control control for the confounding variables that can be misleading in epidemiological studies. So you have a lot of evidence in humans who have been prescribed to follow the Mediterranean diet with its specific recommendations of what to eat, showing that it improves a wide range of health outcomes. With all of the epidemiological studies and the randomized controlled trials, it's hard to say that the Mediterranean diet doesn't have health benefits. It clearly does. It's been repeatedly shown. When combined with other lifestyle habits, the Mediterranean diet is expected to increase disease-free life expectancy by 8 to 10 years. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual foods. What does the Mediterranean diet consist of? Let's look at the clinical Mediterranean diet first because this one has the most evidence for health benefits. Like I said, the clinical Mediterranean diet is more plant-based than the traditional Mediterranean diet. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have vegetables, olive oil, fruit, and whole grains. The main source of dietary animal protein is fish and seafood, followed by eggs, poultry, and cheese. And at the top of the pyramid, you have red meat and sweets. This is the dietary pattern seen in clinical trials to reduce the risk of heart disease, neurodegeneration, and all-cause mortality. However, 
where we also have data about the dietary patterns and the lowest risk of chronic diseases in the Mediterranean regions themselves. A 2023 nationwide cohort study from Spain among over 12,000 individuals found that a higher intake of polyphenols, which includes flavonoids and lignans, was associated with a 20% lower risk of all-cause mortality. This was mostly due to a 40% lower cardiovascular disease risk. The main foods for the polyphenols were found to be leafy green vegetables, red wine, olive oil, green olives, and coffee. Dozens of other cohort studies over the last years in different countries have found similar correlations. Eating polyphenols is linked to less heart disease even outside of the Mediterranean region. A 2024 NHANES study from the US found that a higher berry and flavonoid intake among Americans was linked to reduced mortality in a dose-specific manner. The more berries and flavonoids eaten, the lower the risk of mortality. There are quite a lot of research mechanisms about why the polyphenols might have health benefits. They have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-atherosclerotic, blood pressure lowering, blood sugar lowering, lipid lowering, and endothelial effects. The most common source of polyphenols in the Western world is coffee. Moderate coffee consumption is linked to a reduced risk of many diseases such as colorectal cancer, liver cancer, heart disease, Parkinson's, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. A 2022 study on up to a half million people found that decaf, ground, and even instant coffee all had benefits on reducing the risk of all-cause mortality and heart disease compared to non-drinkers. The lowest risk of death was minus 27% seen with two to three cups of ground coffee a day. One of the most characteristic parts of the Mediterranean diet is olive oil. Higher olive oil intake is linked to lower risk of heart disease, newer degeneration, and mortality in both Mediterranean and other countries. A 2022 study on Americans over the course of 28 years saw that those who consumed the most olive oil over 0.5 tablespoons a day or over 7 grams a day saw a 19% lower risk of all-cause mortality compared to those who never or rarely consumed olive oil. The most famous of the Mediterranean diet clinical trials is the PREDIMED study that involved over 7,000 people at high cardiovascular risk from Spain. For 4.8 years, the subjects were divided into three groups. One, a Mediterranean diet with added extra virgin olive oil. Two, a Mediterranean diet with added nuts. Or three, a controlled diet with advice to just reduce dietary fat intake. None of the diets involved reducing calorie intake or increasing exercise. The Mediterranean diet plus olive oil group saw a 31% lower combined risk of heart attack, stroke, and death from cardiovascular disease compared to the control diet. And the Mediterranean diet plus nuts group saw a 28% lower risk. However, there was no statistically significant difference in total mortality. An analysis of the PREDIMAT study has found that individuals in the highest category of total olive oil intake, with a mean intake of 56.9 grams per day, had a 35% lower cardiovascular disease risk, compared to the lowest category with a mean intake of 21 grams per day. The PREDIMAT study is a randomized clinical trial, not an epidemiological study, which reduces the risk of confounding variables. Unfortunately, most of the commercial olive oil out there is low in polyphenols, and it tends to be mixed with some other oils like canola oil. The fake olive oil business is worth $16 billion a year and is controlled by the mafia. To know if your olive oil brand is good, then you should do some research about them. Check their website, read the label, and see if they have done some third-party testing or if they have some other certifications. The last component of the Mediterranean diet I want to talk about is fish and omega-3s. These are the primary source of protein on the clinical Mediterranean diet. There is a strong epidemiological link between fish consumption and reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, generation and mortality. A 2017 meta-analysis of prospective studies found that fish and omega-3 fat consumption were inversely associated with all-cause mortality risk. There are many meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials showing how omega-3s improve heart function, lower inflammation, and improve insulin sensitivity. Even the clinical Mediterranean diet isn't completely meat-free, but it's not the primary source of protein. Overall, the clinical Mediterranean diet has the most data about its health benefits, and it's certainly the most researched quote-unquote healthy diet. There are literally dozens and even hundreds of studies looking at the health benefits. But it can be somewhat different from the traditional Mediterranean diet, which is going to vary greatly between regions, like people in Spain eat slightly differently than people in Sardinia, Sicily, or Greece, whatever other Mediterranean country, they have all different diets. And people in those regions also have different degrees of the Mediterranean diet. Some people eat more of the traditional Mediterranean foods, like they might eat more olive oil, they might eat more fish, they might eat more meat, they might eat more dairy, more vegetables, more nuts or seeds, whatever it is. It all depends on the individual. There's no single Mediterranean diet in the Mediterranean region. 
so you can't really standardize it. You don't know exactly what kind of a diet are you talking about because <laughs> these people in those regions, they all eat differently. Whereas when we're talking about the clinical Mediterranean diet, then you actually have a standardized protocol, quote unquote, there were standardized food recommendations based on, okay, these are the foods you prioritize, these are the foods you eat less. So you have an actual, quote unquote, like a meal plan with the clinical Mediterranean diet. The last question is, should you be eating the Mediterranean diet? Well, that depends a lot on many factors as well as your own risk tolerance. If you want to completely minimize your risk of heart disease, neurodegeneration, potentially cancer, and reduce your risk of mortality, then based on the highest quality of clinical evidence, then the clinical Mediterranean diet is generally the best one for that. Is it the only one? We don't necessarily know. It's just that the clinical Mediterranean diet has the most research. It also doesn't mean that you can't have different versions of this or you can't adjust the food groups. Like you might have a slightly more plant-based Mediterranean diet or you might have a more animal-based Mediterranean diet, you know, we don't know which one is better and it all probably depends on the individual. However, what I do think is that the general pattern of eating in a Mediterranean style is associated with healthier outcomes, whether that be more of like a plant-based Mediterranean diet, more animal-based, more dairy-based, more fish-based, more beans-based, whatever it is. But the main pattern should generally be still the same. My own opinion is that your diet is just a means to an end to achieving healthy biomarkers and blood work. If whatever diet you're following is making your clinically relevant biomarkers worse, such as inflammation, blood sugar, lipids, etc., then it's not really improving your health. The problem can also be that you're just eating too many calories. It doesn't matter what diet you're on, becoming overweight and overeating calories will worsen your biomarkers, and in so doing, shorten your life expectancy. So the most important thing in my opinion is to monitor your blood work and the diet is secondary. <laughs> like the blood work in my opinion is more important. Obviously there are diets that are going to improve your blood work more or they're more generally going to improve your blood work but it doesn't mean that there aren't other ways to achieve the optimal blood work if that makes sense. All right that's it for this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized. Stay empowered.